Learning DevOps from the ground up can be pretty stressful, but you can avoid a lot of mistakes and a lot of stress and wasted effort by following these six tips. Hey, what's going on? I'm Will Button, and this is DevOps for Developers. And in this video, I'm giving you my six top tips for learning DevOps or any technology, really. So tip number one is start with the end in mind. You have to have a clear goal of what it is you want to accomplish. And I know you've probably heard that before, so let's break it down and talk about what it means in specific examples. It means both the big picture stuff like a year from now, but also micro goals like this particular study session. For example, you want to learn how to become a DevOps engineer, but that's a huge undertaking. It's not a single checkbox to check off. So if you look at some of the job descriptions, you'll find that tools like AWS, Terraform, Linux, and CICD are all required. Each of those becomes a to-do on your study list. But even something like Terraform is way too vague. First of all, what is Terraform anyway? If you don't know, it's hard to know what you should be studying. And even if you know what Terraform is, it can do a lot of things from building a complete AWS environment to building servers, to creating databases and managing DNS. You can't learn all of that in one sitting, so you need to figure out what you want to use it for right now. This is why in so many of the videos that I do, you'll hear me advocate that you need a personal project. A great one is building your own personal website, so maybe that's your goal, to learn how to use Terraform to build the web server that will host your own website. Remember that everything that we use in DevOps is just a tool. And learning how to use this ratchet to unscrew a bolt is useful, but it's not going to provide you with the skills you need to fix your car alone. Tip number two, fail fast. And you may have heard move fast and break things, but we're actually talking about failing fast. What I mean by that is if you start going down a path that's not going to work, you want to know that as soon as possible so you can come up with a new plan or alter your existing one. That differs from move fast and break things because move fast and break things doesn't imply that you actually know what you've broken or why it's broken or if being broken is a bad thing, just that you broke something. Fail fast implies a feedback mechanism, which you can only get if you're following tip number one and you have a clear goal in mind. The reason I include this is because failure is just part of our business. Not every idea we have is going to produce the results that we want. This is true whether you're just starting your DevOps journey or if you have decades of experience doing this stuff. Failing fast in a practical example may look like deciding that you're going to use S3 to deploy your website, but then you learn that you have some server-side rendering in your site, so that's not going to work, and now you need to come up with a plan B. Realizing your original plan won't work is fine, we just want to realize that sooner rather than later in our process. Tip number three is every single day. It's all about consistency. You want to spend some time every day working on your skills. If you've ever learned to play a musical instrument, learned a foreign language, or competed in sports, you know that you have to work on your skills every day to see improvement. If you don't, you'll spend a significant portion of your study time trying to remember what you were working on and remembering the lessons that you've forgotten before you can make forward progress. This means that less time is spent actually moving forward in your study plan. Repetition also builds muscle memory. The more frequently you use these skills, the more solid they'll be in your memory. Think of it like the first time you learn a skill, it goes into a memory cache like Redis. But as you keep using it, your brain realizes, hey, this seems to be kind of important. So it moves it from Redis into the database in your brain where it can be persisted and tied to other records and indexed so that you can find it quickly when you need it. Tip number four, no army goes to battle without a plan. Well, at least no victorious army. And neither should you. Your training plan should exist on paper in a fairly detailed format before you start building. As you gain experience, you'll learn to quickly identify the people who never learned this skill because they're always the ones who build these monster applications with tons of components and services, but they fail to add something like a login screen. If we reference the earlier example of deploying your own website with Terraform, a battle plan may have some steps like a website, 
which may seem kind of obvious, but we don't take anything for granted when we're documenting our battle plan. You need Terraform installed and working. You're going to need a Terraform workspace set up if you're using Terraform Cloud. You'll need an account with the provider, whether that's AWS or GCP or DigitalOcean or whoever. You're going to need a domain name, a GitHub repo, which also means that you'll need a GitHub account. And that's just the stuff that I thought of off the top of my head. So you kind of see the importance of stopping to write this stuff down. Nothing kills your momentum quicker than getting excited to start building, only to have to go set up an account somewhere that you didn't realize was a dependency. The next step, tune the world out. Think about your favorite athletes. In competition, they can tune out the thousands of people screaming in the stadium and focus on doing just one thing. This ability is called flow state, and it's something you're going to want to try to replicate. If you're not familiar with it, don't worry about it. The most important part is to control your environment. Sit in the same chair, face the same direction. Even doing it at the same time of day can help mentally set you up for success. If you can, control the noise and distractions, and when you can't, it's time for some music. I know a lot of people like lo-fi beats. It makes sense because you don't want to play your favorite songs and end up spending the next 60 minutes lip-syncing your favorite band instead of actually studying. For me, it's Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon for design and architecture work, and Metallica's And Justice for All for writing code. The last tip, and possibly the most important one, don't do this alone. Go out and make some friends with similar interests. It will literally shave years off of the learning curve if you have someone to talk about this stuff with. Not only that, but when you start looking for jobs, your ability to find jobs goes up exponentially because of your friends, and when you're asked for references who can vouch for your work, you already have them. Finally, by pairing up as a team, you'll be able to build bigger, more impressive projects that not only look good on your resume, but give you the opportunity to talk about how you work as part of a team during the interview. So those are my six tips for helping you learn DevOps or any skill really. Put them into practice and let me know down in the comments how they worked for you. Also check out the DevOps roadmap to get a better understanding of what your study path should look like. I've got a link for you in the description below. Thanks and uh, I'll see you in the next video.